Hello, and welcome to part four of the module that provides a case study of Gang of Four patterns. In the previous parts in this module, we first explained what an expression tree and an expression tree processing application is. We talked about some of the limitations with using algorithmic design. We showed a method and the outcome of applying object-oriented design to our expression tree processing application. And now we're going to focus on the patterns we'll be discussing throughout the rest of the module that we use in order to structure the various interactions, roles, responsibilities, and behaviors of the classes and objects in our object-oriented expression tree processing application. Before we cover the patterns in detail for the expression tree processing app, however, I'd first like to give an outline of the design space of patterns in the so-called Gang of Four book. Uh, this book, of course, is the Design Patterns, uh, Elements of Reusable Object-Oriented Software book, also known as the Gang of Four or Golf book. There are a couple different ways to categorize the Gang of Four patterns. One is by purpose. We have things like creational patterns that can be used to abstract the process of instantiating objects. We have structural patterns, which describe how classes and objects can be combined to form larger structures. We have the so-called behavioral patterns, which are concerned with communication between objects, making method calls or passing messages or making remote procedure calls and so on. There's also another dimension which is called scope, which explains the domain where the patterns apply. Do they apply primarily to classes? Do they apply primarily to objects and so on? As you'll see throughout the rest of this particular module, we're going to cover over half of the patterns in the Gang of Four book in the context of our expression tree processing application. You can take a look at this URL to find out more information about the Gang of Four book. And I strongly encourage you to get a copy of the book and read it. It has a wealth of knowledge about how to do effective design, especially some of the core patterns for object-oriented design and programming. So let's now talk about some of the patterns that we apply in the context of our expression tree case study and the design problems these patterns address. So one of the first set of problems we're dealing with here is how to uh, design the structure of the expression tree in a way that would be more extensible and easier to work with over time. If you recall the earlier part where we discussed limitations with the algorithmic decomposition approach, I mentioned how it was very tightly coupled, which meant small changes had big consequences on breaking large parts of the code. So we'd like to find a way to be able to organize the structure of the tree more effectively so those kinds of problems don't happen over the life cycle. We'll see that we're going to be applying a Gang of Four pattern called Composite in order to be able to structure the tree in a hierarchical and recursive form. Uh, another problem we have to deal with is how we're going to encapsulate variability, hide some of the different ways of being able to express different parts of our solution. And in cases where we implement with languages like C++ that don't have automatic garbage collection, we'd like to find a way to automatically simplify memory management. In order to do these kinds of things, we're going to apply another Gang of Four pattern called the bridge pattern, which is used to separate interface from implementation and can also be used to cleverly reference count our expression trees so they can be passed around more readily via things like value-based STL algorithms and containers. Of course, we also have to figure out a way to create our tree. Uh, we're not just going to write the tree by hand allocating each of the nodes manually every time we want to compute an expression, we're going to find some way to, to type the expression in, either through a command line interface or some kind of dialog box or some kind of graphical user interface. And in order to make those parts very simple to deal with, in order to be able to parse the expressions and create the expression tree, which is going to be based on a composite, we're going to apply the Gang of Four iterator and builder patterns to structure the way in which creation takes place. Once we've got our tree created, then we can do various things to traverse it and to perform actions upon it. One of the problems we'd seen with the algorithmic design was these things were very tightly coupled. It was very hard to make changes to the structure of the tree without affecting the way in which the functions worked and vice versa. In our particular approach, we're going to come up with a way to be able to print and evaluate the tree in a way that doesn't expose the details and allows us to add various kinds of actions without changing the structure. To do this, we're going to apply the Gang of Four patterns for iterator and visitor. As we do this, as we apply these patterns for iteration and visiting, 
We're also going to be trying to follow as closely as we can to the C++ STL iterator form. And in order to do this, we have to represent certain things in certain ways. And it turns out that one of the challenges is how to talk between the bridge interface, which encapsulates variability, and the composite portion of our tree. And to do this effectively is going to require a way to anonymously create various objects. And we're going to use the prototype pattern from the Gang of Four book in order to be able to create these objects in a way that doesn't expose their type. When we start building out the application, there's more to it than just the expression tree and creating the expression tree. We'd also like to have a way of being able to let users interact with our program by being able to invoke various kinds of commands. So do things like create a tree, print a tree, evaluate the tree, and so on. And we're going to consolidate all those different commands and unify them in a single generic interface by applying the Gang of Four command pattern, which can be used to simplify command access. Something else you'll see throughout the solution we come up with, our object oriented design, is this concept of commonality and variability. We're going to use patterns like bridge to implement the interfaces in a common way. We're going to use some other patterns in order to be able to create variabilities in a common way. This will allow us to consolidate the creation of various things that change, things like commands, iterators, and so on. To do this, we're going to apply the Gang of Four abstract factory and factory method patterns to decouple the creation of objects from their subsequent use. Another set of things we're going to do is make sure that as people begin to type commands into our program, they apply those commands in the right order. In other words, they obey the command protocol. And to simplify this and to make the implementation very common and regular and consistent, yet also be able to enforce the protocol for correct command ordering, we're going to apply the Gang of Four state pattern. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to use a pattern that's going to structure our overall application. And we'll do this in order to be able to decouple where the input comes from and how that input is dispatched to various kinds of event handlers that perform the work of the expression tree application. This is one part in this module where we're going to deviate ever so slightly from the patterns in the Gang of Four book. And instead, we're going to cover a pattern from the POSA 2 book, Pattern Oriented Software Architecture Volume 2 book, which talks about patterns for concurrent and distributed objects. And we're going to be applying the reactor pattern. You can read about the reactor pattern at this link or by looking at the POSA 2 book. Going back to Gang of Four patterns again, it turns out that there's a couple of different modes we run our application in. We're going to have succinct mode, which is just a very simple command line oriented uh, calculator program that takes expressions you type in and returns the results. We're also going to have a verbose mode where it prompts you for various kinds of commands that you can enter. And in order to be able to keep the verbose mode and succinct mode cleanly delineated from an application structure point of view, we're going to apply the Gang of Four strategy and template method patterns, which are ways of being able to hold certain steps in an algorithm fixed while being able to vary the implementations of those algorithmic steps. We're also going to talk about ways of centralizing access to certain global resources, in particular the options that are passed in on the command line, or being able to access the single use of a reactor to run the event loop for our program. To do this, we're going to apply the infamous singleton pattern, which can be used to provide a global access point to an object without requiring the use of global variables, which turns out to be a very useful thing to use in C++, even though you have to be somewhat careful to apply this uh, sparingly and only under the right circumstances. And the last pattern we're going to cover in this set is a pattern we'll use to illustrate how you can integrate some of the STL algorithms, like the for each algorithm, with some of the object-oriented framework elements that we're designing here for our expression trees. So to do this, we're going to be able to use the adapter pattern from the Gang of Four book. And we'll see an interesting situation here where uh, earlier versions of C++ required you to use adapters to implement functors or function objects to pass in as parameters to for each. Later versions of C++, C++11, allow you to replace the use of the adapter and the functor as a pattern with a language feature called a range-based, I'm sorry, called a lambda expression, which is a kind of a little piece of anonymous function code you can plop in to your, your algorithms that expect to have functors. Naturally, these patterns apply to many more things than to expression tree processing applications. We're just going to use this as a 
touch point as a motivating application to give you some context as we talk about the patterns and illustrate their pros and their cons and how they apply and when to use them effectively. So to summarize this part of the module, the gang of four patterns provide elements of reusable object-oriented software that can be used to address many of the limitations with algorithmic decomposition and other design approaches that do not lend themselves as readily to understandability, reusability, modularity, extensibility, and so on. So through the rest of this module, we will look at each of these patterns in turn, understand the circumstances and the design problems that motivate their use, and then describe how they can be applied in order to make the expression tree processing application much easier to understand and work with and evolve over time.